Hello. So, yeah, my name is Jon Fagerström, and I'm from the Alto Acoustics Lab, here to present to you the dark velvet noise. Uh, and, yeah, this paper was uh, co-authored by Niels meyer Kalen, Sebastian Schlecht, and... <coughs> oh, no. Vesa <laughs> Välimäki. Great start. All right. <laughs> so, first, uh, something about the motivation behind the research. So, uh, uh, the original velvet noise is a sparse uh, ternary noise sequence, and a typical application for velvet noise has been in efficient reverberation. Uh, however, then most reverbs will have some kind of frequency dependent decay also, so we would need some additional filtering to the sequence to create this frequency dependency. So we thought then that could we generate the frequency dependency without extra filters. So let's see if that will work. <laughs> so yeah, then about the background. So here you can see uh, an example of the original white velvet noise. So it is ter ternary sequence, so it has only values of plus one, minus one, and, and mostly zeros. And uh, it can be conceptualized as this jittered unit impulses. So there you can see the dashed line show the uh, grid, grid uh, positions, and then you have like one unit impulse within each of those grid segments. And that will then have a, a wide spectrum. So let's listen to it, and hopefully it's not super loud. I hear something, it's quite quiet, I guess. Yeah, but it's very soft. Can you hear anything? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, and there you can see the spectrum. So it's a flat spectrum, basically. And yeah, then Werner then discovered how to generate high-pass velvet noise. So the idea is there that if you modify the sign probabilities, then you can get this kind of like low shelf spectrum. And here I, I show just the extreme case where you allow only, only positive impulses. And let's listen to that one also then. So some kind of noise also. <laughs> Should be high passed sound. Hopefully it comes across somehow. Uh, so then, what about low pass then? That would be more practical for the reverberation algorithm, where you would typically have the higher frequencies to decay faster and then end up with some low pass noise towards the end of the reverb. So, yes, you can do some kind of low pass also. So, Meyer Kalen et al. also showed that this crust additive random noise with inflated uniform updates idea. So, there the idea is that you, you specify that some of the impulses will have to be right next to each other. So, that creates then the low pass effect. And here I show two different examples also where you have different control over the sign probability also. And in the spectrum, this, this case would be have like a less low pass behavior and then a stronger low pass behavior somewhere towards the top here with the, this, this sequence. And sure, let's listen to some more noise. So it has this low pass spectrum, but then with this additive random noise, there is the problem that, uh, well, first of all, the size of the blocks is kind of unbounded. So you, could, you can't specify how, how long will the longest block be when you generate it. And then also the length of the gaps is independent, so you can get larger gaps, and then that can cause roughness in the temporal. <coughs> or in the sequence when you listen to it. So, then let's get to the 
dark velvet noise. But first, I'll drink some water. <laughs> All right. So let's let's start again from the white velvet noise. So we have the grid, and then these unit impulses within each grid segment. And maybe you already forgot how it sounds, so let's listen to it again. <laughs> sounds still quite white and smooth to me. So then how do we get the dark velvet noise out of this? Is that we allow each of the pulses to have a random pulse width. And also the size of the uh, or the pulse width is limited by the grid size so that we we only allow the pulse to be within the grid still so we don't overlap the grid boundaries. And there is the only equation I will show also. And yeah with this this kind of this dark velvet noise you will get a spectrum like this then. And it should sound smooth and dark. That's why the name So then, some more details about the spectral shape. So the shape is actually then completely described by the uh, rectangular pulses that appear in the sequence. Uh, cause, because the different pulse or different pulse widths will occur at random times and with equal probability for each of them, then they are uh, uncorrelated and actually the mean spectrum of just the all unique pulse widths will uh, describe the spectral shape. So here in the figure you can see in blue the uh, response from the sequence and then in red is just this uh, pulse mean spectrum. And the roll-off is approximately like 6 dB per octave so it's kind of like first order low pass kind of spectrum that results from it. So then, then the cutoff of the dark velvet noise is uh, modulated by the density because we now allow like the widest pulse can be always the size of the grid size. So then the sparser sequence has space for wider pulses basically. So here with low density the cutoff moves lower and that then with high density the cutoff moves higher. Uh, so now I have to confess that I lied about the extra filters when we come to the implementation. <laughs> so, because we would like to convolve with the dark velvet noise in the reverb example, but it's not so great idea to just do it like that because you have these longer pulses. But we can do it with the recursive running sum filter instead, where we do the convolution of each of the pulses with this RRS filter. And then we have one, uh, one of these for each of the pulse widths. And we included the leaky factor in the structure so that it would be stable. So we would move the pole a little bit away from the unit circle. And here are some plots still show, showing the pulse on the left, the actual rectangular pulse, and then the with the leaky factor and then also the spectrum so that we are sure that we didn't make any uh, big changes to the spectrum when we include the leaky factor. Uh, so then the full dark velvet noise convolution can be implemented with this kind of structure where we have the multi-tap delay line to uh, have the randomized pulse locations and then these plus and minus gains uh, to, uh, for the polarity of each pulse. And then we just route each of the, uh, the delay line outputs to the RRS filters to get the randomized pulse widths. So then how would we use this as a reverberator then? So what we can now do then is to modulate this two parameters, so the maximum pulse width and the number of pulses, so the density of the sequence during the, uh, during the impulse response of the generated sequence. 
And uh, yes, so with these, these parameters that I show here, we then get narrower pulses towards the beginning of the sequence. So it will be more, we'll have more wide spectrum. And then towards the end, we allow wider pulses and we will get more, more low pass. And here are then uh, the spectrogram and the T60 times from that example that I showed on the earlier slide. And as you can see, we can get this kind of characteristic late, rever late reverberation where the high frequencies then decay faster than the lower frequencies. So then some details about the computational cost. So this was like a, just a two second long example that we generated for this and the numbers are for that two second long example. So in terms of the memory, we are a bit better than the uh, or better than the partial fast convolution but still the partial fast convolution is very efficient in terms of the floating point operations all right so then some more sounds and not just noises this time so uh, i created this with two different kinds of input signals so one is this drum loop And the other one is maybe a familiar piece of singing. I am sitting in the morning at the diner on the corner. So then I generated some examples with different parameters. So I made like a longer, longer reverb sound. Let's hear that with the singing maybe. I am sitting in the morning at the diner on the corner. And then I can just easily make just a shorter sequence and create a shorter reverb then. Then as, as this is just an FIR structure, it's then quite easy to do something else also with the decay. So here I made this kind of just a short, maybe 10 dB decay and then it will just stop abruptly so you get this kind of gated, gated like reverb out of it. And then as the final example I did, so that it will still decay, or the energy will decay, but now it will go from dark to bright instead of the bright to dark. So kind of just flipping how the pulse widths are changed during the time. So you can get this kind of nice effect out of that. Uh -huh. But you can get many types of effects with the structure. So, yeah, then let's conclude. Uh, so we proposed the dark velvet noise as an extension to the velvet noise, which has a low-pass spectrum. And the unit impulses of the normal velvet noise are replaced with these random with rectangular pulses to create, create the spectrum. And then we propose this efficient implementation uh, by using the RRS filters for the convolution. And we showed that you can generate characteristic artificial reverberation by modulating the maximum pulse width and the density parameters over time. And here are still some key references, and I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, that's badass. Uh, you showed some graphs of the 
the way that the pulse width changes over the course of the reverb tail. Uh, yes. Could you explain uh, how you chose that particular shape and uh, so what, what happens ones. if yeah these ones and like what happens if you pick a different yeah. curve? For yeah, instance? it's easy to answer because I just tried something and picked these ones. <laughs> but basically, you can do you can do whatever you want and try different things. But th this seemed to. Uh, or I picked this kind of by looking at the spectrogram that with these kind of curves you will get something that reminds us of a typical reverb spectrogram. So yeah. yeah. More questions? I have a, a silly question. All right. Why don't you take just normal velvet noise and pass it through a low-pass filter, since you low-pass filter anyway? Yes, that's a good question. Well, I guess uh, one of the things is that with this we don't have to do any like time-varying filtering than when we still have to convolve with this dark velvet noise sequence. So we just modulate the parameters along the sequence and then just convolve with that sequence. And it will have the time varying spectrum then inherently. Okay, so you can adapt better this to your, uh, to, uh, you can adapt the spectrum better to your needs this way. Uh, well, what I'm saying that you don't like need any, if you would have the low pass filter, you would maybe have like then a feedback loop where you get more and more low pass or then you have to modulate the low pass filter cutoff also then. Okay, more questions? No? Then thank you again. Thank you.